We are going to be spending the next 48 hours living at the most isolated bothy in Scotland. This right here is the Kirvig Bothy. It's situated in the most northwestern point of mainland Britain and it is only accessible by foot. And the best part, a room with this view is absolutely free. Wow. There's no way else here. We might as well go in without our swimmers. Woo! This place is honestly just magical, man. So good morning everybody from just outside the Highland town of Scourie. This is where we slept last night. It's literally just a little bit by the side of the road. There is a deer grid just over there. But actually it turned out to be a really quiet road after about 11 p.m. And I don't think a single car went past until about 5 a.m. again. We parked up here basically because we're heading up the west coast and this was the last spot that we could actually find that had really good signal. So we decided to park up here get ourselves ready for today and then we'll head on to Cape Wrath after that. So today is finally the day that we're going to be heading up to the very northwest tip of Scotland. We're going to a place called Cape Wrath and more specifically the Kirvig Bothy which is like the most northern bothy and arguably the most beautiful location for a bothy in the entire world and we're planning to hike out to there spend the next 48 hours living at the very top of the world in a tent or inside the bothy. Now because it is such a remote place actually getting to the bothy is where the complicated part begins. Begins. First of all, we need to get a ferry from just outside the small town of Durness, from which we then hike about three and a half hours up to the Bothy, which sits right up the very northern coast. Now, so far this morning, we've just been getting ourselves ready, starting to come up with a little bit of a plan of how we're going to get there, what we need to pack, and basically what the next couple of days is going to consist of. And Gemma's just jumped in the shower to make the most of our last bit of hot water for the next couple of days before we hit the road. I am so appreciating this last hot shower. I do just also want to make sure the water tank's full because I know the first thing that we're going to want to do after being out in the hills for 48 hours is take a warm shower. I am so glad that we prepared and bought these when we saw them. For once, I know, right? What would you rather have for dinner? So we need two dinners, two breakfasts and one lunch. Right, and this is what we've already decided on. We've got spicy no beef noodles. We're gonna have one of them each. We've got a spicy smoky mac and milk. And then for dinner one night, we're gonna be doing a lentil shepherd's pie. But we've also got... We've got three bean chili or cauliflower dal. That is the toughest decision I'll ever make you. I'm gonna go for the dal. Well, I'll go right. for the same as you, because I don't wanna get food. <laughs> so we actually stopped off at a little spa yesterday, um, just because, well, why did we stop off? Oh, we stopped off to get a map. And when we were there, I said to Campbell, why don't you pick up like some chocolate, some snacks? Don't go like, we don't wanna go hungry, room. especially now if we're deciding to go out for two nights. Well, we had not had dinner, it was, about half past seven at night. We were starving. We'd just been on two really long walks yesterday. I'm, I'm a little bit, embarrassed to show what we have picked up. All right, so that is all the dinner food, basically at the back. And that <laughs> is all the sugar food that we picked up as well. We did get some blueberries too. Something They're nearly else. finished. All right, so do you want to take us on a quick, very quick run through of everything that we're packing? Where do I start? Right, so far I've packed blister plasters, hay fever tablets, paracetamol, ibuprofen, just in case we need them. Um, I've got midge spray, sun cream, I've got some moisturizer for me, some baby wipes, toothbrush, toothpaste, midge nets, these midge bracelets, which I have to say they've actually been really good. So we're taking one of these as well. Got my shiwi, we've got some incense stick, got my eye mask, sunglasses, map, hats, warm clothes. We should be, we should be fine. We should be fine. In this actual bag itself, which Gemma's gonna be carrying, we've got two sleeping bags, two row mats. We're also gonna be taking a tent, as well as two survival bags, just in case we get caught out on the hills, or in case we wanna do some bivying beneath the stars one and night. So all that's left now is to do the magic trick of getting all of this into that bag. Can we do it? All right, we are absolutely bursting to capacity and we realized that- Change we had, of plans. <laughs> we should pack the bag and didn't have the tent or the cooking equipment, which I believe are kind of priorities. I would say- um, So <laughs> we've had to start again. I would say they're more of a priority than the pillow. So what I've decided <laughs> to do is I've got a sweaty clothes so I'm gonna wear while hiking. At night, they can go in here. I'll like roll this up and then that can be my pillow and I'll I just think pack that's a good idea. I'll just pack the, uh, pillowcase. the pillowcase. I mean this is the kind of thing we used to do when we went camping. We literally roughed it, but look at that face. That is a face of a motorhome owner. I'm an old man now. That is all of a sudden like a motorhome and a pension. <laughs> we just realised that we haven't actually unpacked the tent since Sky and it was raining, so the tent's probably grown mold, which will weigh another kilogram. Right, come on. Oh, 
All right, last meal in the van. I feel like I'm saying goodbye to her forever. <laughs> Got a massive bowl of pasta to help fuel us through. And I'm very excited. Are you, are you excited? I'm buzzing. I am so excited for this. These are the kind of adventures that I just like live for. Like the potential is just, oh, it's, it's so big. It's gonna be so good. Let's see this one go. We hit the road, our hearts full of excitement for what would be our first multi-day camping trip in over five years. The sun was shining over the north of Scotland and the conditions were as good as we could have possibly hoped for. So all that was left to do was catch the ferry and begin our epic adventure to Scotland's most isolated body. You ready? I'm ready. So now we've just got a, about a six mile hike from the harbour up and over. I think the peak is about 175 metres. And then it's just downhill into the bay at the Bothy. That is so beautiful. I've got views already. What a stunning place. That is insane. Uh, what have we just spotted? Seals. Oh my goodness, look at them sunbathing there. That I, is so cute. I thought cute. it was rocks and then Isn't I just saw them moving. Oh. The road stretched along the shore, giving us some of the most breathtaking views that we have ever been able to enjoy, before it turned inland and began to wind through the barren landscape of Cape Wrath. The peninsula is separated from the rest of the mainland by the Kyle of Durness and consists of 107 square miles of moorland wilderness known as the Parf. Due to the sheer size and inaccessibility of this part of the world, it's actually used for some pretty interesting activities, as we soon found out for ourselves. It's halfway snack time. And yeah, so this entire area here that we're currently walking through is the Cape Wrath Peninsula. It's one of the most inaccessible parts of Scotland. And because of that, the MOD actually use it for training exercises. I think it's shut twice this month, once in the middle of June and then once at the end of June. And so basically all along the path that we've been walking on, there's been signposts saying don't touch any kind of suspicious items. Got Kit Kat Chunky, one hell of a view. That's the smallest Kit Kat Chunky I've ever seen. I know, I swear they used to be chunkier. I've got some galaxy. Cheers. Oh wow, and the beach is just coming into view. That water, oh my god. And that right there is going to be our home for the next two nights. Wow! How do I move in here? How do I sign that rental agreement? I'll come here tomorrow. Honestly, that is just the best view I've ever seen in my life. Oh. What a cute little place. Honestly, there's not much of a bed or anything like that. It's just this kind of like church owl pew along one corner of it and a fireplace with some decorations. Yeah, let's go and check out the rest of it. A must have for any Bothy adventure. This place is huge. There's actually two floors to this Bothy. The first ever both of them that's had two levels. Do you want to show us around? I'm thinking we could go in here. Yeah. So we can have like our own little area. Oh yeah, just sleep on the floor. It's cute. Yeah, definitely. Can you take my bag off and leave it here? Oh, and what about that for a view to wake up to? Oh my goodness. We spent some time exploring around our new home, excited with the thought that we might be spending our first night ever under the roof of a Highland Bothy. In case you're wondering, Highland Bothies like this are run and maintained by the Mountain Bothy Association and are shelters for travellers in the most inhospitable parts of the world. Most Bothies, like this one, are completely free to use and don't require booking. However, sometimes they are of use, so it is always important to check the MBA website before heading off on an adventure. That's our breakfast for tomorrow morning. Richmond sausages. Now a uh, non-pork burger. Non-pork. Oh, the joys of camping. That's it's just, no better. It's just more square sausage, I guess. I know. It's 
because we've ended up coming out a few hours earlier than we'd planned. We do actually have the perfect amount of food, funnily enough. It's funny how that works out. So we've got two um, pots each of like a kind of dried mac and cheese. And basically you just need to boil some water and chuck it into that. I did realize that we only packed one fork. Um, I planned to try and grab a spoon before we left the van, but luckily, I just need to give this one a little bit of a wash first. Come, it just like smells anyway. Yeah. I don't really oh no, it's the mac and cheese, mate. Don't worry, it's, it's not my feet. Cheers. Cheers. That's spicy. Not as bad as I thought it was going to be. That's the famous last word, isn't it? I think the most difficult part for me now is despite the actual hike to get out to here being, you know, 12 kilometers up and down the hills, actually organizing to get on the ferry and all that, the toughest part is definitely going to be just actually relaxing here. Um, because you were just saying yourself, what we do now, right, I need to go and do this, I need to go and do that. There's nothing to do. We're here for the next 48 hours. I know. We're planning to go on a little <laughs> hike tomorrow, maybe just out to the lighthouse and back. Got some dishes to wash, maybe go for a little swim in the river. But apart from that, there's nothing to do but literally just sit here and relax. I know. Which is nice. quite nice. Gemma actually just came up with a genius idea. We're in setting up our beds. This is her packing cube from her Tropic Fuel bag. Does that not just look like a comfy pillow? I don't know, I never thought about that before. No, it feels quite it's good. like, so we've got toilet shoes and that's like clothing on this side, but I'm thinking if I just stuff like, these two towels in there yeah. as well. You're gonna end up with a comfier pillow. And then me. fold that over like that. Like, that would be lovely, man. Like that. <laughs> Fantastic. This is a sneaky little. Oh, look at this. He's trying to get me. Mm. Look at that. Oh. We haven't actually been that bothered by them this summer yet. That was a close call. Look out for these little devils. Get your oh, ass yeah. on out of here. Stay out. So the Bothy of course doesn't actually have any running water, which was one of our main concerns in terms of getting drinking water. However, like I said, I checked the map and there is actually a river just over here. Okay, so we're just gonna go a little wander, see if we can find anywhere that's good to actually fill up our bottles um, for cups of tea, for drinking, and maybe even a little swim later on to freshen up. I bet down there might be all right. Sheltered. It would be sheltered down there, yeah. So you can still tell by our clothing that the wind Oh, I'll cut you in half today. So if we are going in for a swim or anything like that, it needs to be somewhere sheltered. I know, it's like one of those things that actually the beach is so beautiful and I really want to go for a swim in the sea, but then I'm going to end up covered in sand and salt and water. The aim of this is to actually just get clean, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> That's more than there than it is out here. I mean, it's not cold, it's not warm, but it's definitely a lot warmer than it was at um, Camistara Beach the other day. <laughs> <laughs> so we did actually bring swimmers with us, but you know, there's no one here. And if we get our swimmers wet, it means we need to dry them. So we're going to do it naked instead. Much better. After our swim, it was time to heat up with a quick cup of tea, enjoying the sunshine and the beautiful view from our home before we went on our final adventure of the day. I honestly cannot believe how white and how soft this sand is. That is just, it gives the Maldives a run for its money. That's amazing. Go, 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 go. Oh, oh run. Ah! I've got them on, my only dry socks. No. Come on, run, run across, it's not that deep. So no, 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 for that. Go, 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 yeah. <laughs> We were basically told that there's another beach just over there. Yeah, we just need to climb up over these rocks instead, I think. All right, I think we've come to the wrong side. That looks like it's just over there. But look, look where we are now. So beautiful. 
Especially along the cliff there, there's like all these kind of wild lavender flowers. Really reminds me of Guernsey. Yeah. Like the cliffs. It's gorgeous. Yeah. Oh. What a spot. Maybe we'll see puffins as well. There was loads of little notes written in the Bothy book about people seeing puffins. What are you doing down there? I was literally just sitting on the zoom camera to try and see if I could see any puffins on the rock and I turned around and Gemma's miles away down exploding this arch that she spotted down on the beach. Ah, hello. Hello. Have you spotted? Arch. But there's like so much seaweed in there that it literally looks like the devil's snare. <laughs> um, but I think we should be able to get through it. Coming. As long as that water doesn't make it up to there, then we should be fine. Oh God. You remember what happens when we go into caves? Oh, I don't want to go first. I never thought about that. <laughs> Do I want to go first? Hello. Hello. Please, no flap. No flap. Please. Wow. That is so cool. You can just get a much better perspective of that sea column. That is cool. Worth the hike. As the sun set over our own little slice of paradise, it quickly became apparent that we were going to be the only two people spending the night in the Kirveg Bothy. All alone, surrounded by breathtaking beauty, we felt like little kids again, exploring the rock pools and playing in the sand. The only two people to exist in the entire world. This place was truly magical, and we wished that the night would never end. Hello. I have a feeling we might be alone tonight. How does that make you feel? I was 100% expecting there to be people here, especially because it's a Friday night. Um, I was thinking this weekend it was going to be absolutely mobbed. And especially looking at the Bothy book, actually, there's been a lot of people. Like last night, there were seven people here. So I'm quite surprised it's the weekend and no one's turned up. But I guess it's kind of nice. We get it to ourselves. Maybe tomorrow night we'll get to meet some other travellers. Wait and see. Yeah, I've got to say I'm a bit mixed. One hand, a bit of privacy, all to ourselves. That's good. On the other hand, we need to deal with the Kirveg ghost all by ourselves. Hopefully there's nothing going to go bad. So As we sat together witnessing the captivating sunset over Kirveg Bay, we couldn't help but feel a shared sense of gratitude. The breathtaking scene before us served as the perfect reminder of the many blessings that we share in our lives and just how fleeting they can sometimes be. We are grateful for the chance to explore such awe-inspiring places. We appreciate the love and support from those around us, which not only make these experiences possible, but they make them even more meaningful as we get to create memories from them that we get to hold forever. In these fleeting moments, as the sun dips below the horizon, we're reminded to cherish the simple joys in life and treat each and every one as if it were to be our last. And so the sun's just set. We've just come outside to do some teeth brushing. And we've got deer come down off the hill, right from our bedroom window, we can actually see them. This place is honestly just magical, man. Magical. What an into the night and what a magical place. I love it. Tired, but all in all, I had a good sleep. We got up at about, I'd say about half past one, and it still wasn't overly dark, was it? And there was deer so, like, completely surrounding the bothy, but we had to go for a pee, and like we literally opened the door and they bolted, so they're clearly still kind of not used to humans being around here. Yeah, I had a little bit of a better night's sleep than I did the last time we went camping, which was out on the Kuthrang. It was a bit warmer. My pillow was a bit better than then, and also it was just more sheltered. Like, being in a bothy, although it was still so cold last night, it was nowhere near as cold as if we were in, like, a windy tent. Oh, no. I don't no. think. The bad thing is, today, there's not a breath of wind, and literally just went outside there to get water, completely attacked by midges. Oh. So, we can't, you can't win in Scotland. <laughs> windy and cold, warm and sunny, and you get carried off over the horizon by midges. <laughs> Just realised I never actually told you about our sleeping setup last night. So this comfy little bed, and basically we closed that door, pushed all our bags up against it. You know, just to stop the ghost of Kirby getting in through the night. 
And then also, Gemma pointed out that we've got a big window here and the worst fear is waking up and seeing a head torch peering in at us while we sleep and someone staring at us while we sleep. So, we found a jumper that was left through in the other room and someone's old jumper. Nice little curtain. Job done. So today we're heading out on a much easier hike. The plan is to follow the trail back up to the main road, which the minibus runs along, and then follow that trail all the way along to the most western point, which leads out to the Cape Wrath Lighthouse. That is actually where the minibus usually drops people off at, and apparently there's a cafe there that sits right at the very edge of the world. So fingers crossed we can go and get some tea, get a couple of cakes, and then just go and see why there's a cafe in such a remote part of Scotland. So if anyone is looking for a bus conversion job, I've got the perfect uh, project for you. Just sitting up here on the Cape Wrath Peninsula, I'll do you a good deal, market price, £15,000, collection only. DM us, let us know. Oh, it does exist. What a relief, I was really starting to doubt it. Eight kilometres from where we started. Yeah, 7.7 7 kilometres, 8k to the actual lighthouse. How much did I say it was? About four or five? That was a lot longer than we were expecting. Oh, hallelujah. I just hope they've got cakes. <laughs> I'm going to be devastated if they don't have cakes. We just came up over the hill, we can see Keirvig Bay again, but I don't know what it is. It feels so violating. Like coming back and seeing someone else on my beach. <laughs> we had that all to ourselves last night. Oh my god, oh, right, okay, there's an absolute party yeah, happening tonight. Gemma's left her pants sitting out. Last dinner in the Bothy, we decided to come down onto the beach, partly because there's not a breath of wind tonight, um, and so it's so beautiful and peaceful down here. And also partly because there's no wind up at the Bothy, the midges are absolutely ridiculous. I literally just set up the tent to take some photos, and I think I, I awoke the midgey kingdom. So everyone else that is now staying at the Bothy tonight is getting swarmed by midges right at this moment. Got some cauliflower dal, and then I'll just heat it up in a pot. Same as last night. Mmm, smells of dal. I've got to say, as our last night on the trip, I am so, so happy that we've actually finally been able to make it. This has been a bucket list experience we've been talking about for like years since we first started writing our first North Coast 500 book. I remember reading about this magical little bothy that sits way out on like the end of the world and we finally actually managed to go and visit it and experience it, but completely alone by ourselves yeah. for an entire 24 hours. We were the only two people on this entire place. It was magical. And it's been so nice to feel dis connected from everything as well almost like disconnected but connected I guess like definitely we've just like not even really picked up our phones apart from just to snap some memories like for example earlier we realized it took us about half an hour to wash the sand off our feet it's just like the simple things that you normally just rush and everything like we could do a like, lot more you know, mindfully, it's just, mindful yeah. and it's just lovely and we haven't been bored which has surprised me like I thought I was gonna be like itching for like things to do but I've had my head stuck in my kindle we've been spending so much time walking and just going around and exploring this area and what a trip. this is up there with like my favorite place in the world and like the best thing we've ever done i think so i've just loved it so it's not as relaxing a start to the day as i would have hoped for um i thought it was only going to take us two and a half hours to get back to the ferry so we'd ate the same ferry that we got onto in the first day it's now quarter past seven i've only left us two hours and 15 minutes turns out it was three and a half hours it took us to get here so we're going to need to jog a lot of the way back up i can see the boat's just coming over we're gonna make it under two hours. 11.7 kilometers later. Ah, oh, I cannot miss it now. Well, high five for that movie. Good job. <laughs> 
job. That was so tough. We had blistered feet, sore legs, period pains, bush vomits, midges sticking to our sweat. But we love the challenge and the best feeling is completing the challenge that we didn't think that we were going to complete. I know. And I am going to absolutely gulp this if i got midges. All over your nose. Oh. I've got them all over my arms as well. That was good. That was good fun. What a way to finish that adventure. Shower time, get some breakfast, some coffees in us, and then it's on to the next one. Oh, but first I think a big seat. <laughs> well done. Well done. Mm. All right, we're just going to sign this video off here, guys. I hope you've enjoyed it. And if you did, please give it a big thumbs up. It just lets us know we're doing the right thing. And if you're new around here and you like our stupid adventures just like this one, then why not subscribe and join the gang? And we'll see you again in the next one. See ya. <laughs> Auto rope, that's intended. Do you struggle with carrying all of your water bottles at the same time? Oh uh, no, my bottle landed in sheep sh Well, have I got the product for you. Introducing Bottle Rope. Thanks to the wonders of science and Scottish tight-fistedness, we've developed the ultimate product to help you carry multiple bottles at the exact same time. All you need for this wonderful product is one piece of jetsam rope that you can find on any beach, and you're good to go on your next camping adventure. Wow. Thanks, Bottle Rope. Bottle Rope is a certified product of the Highlands Dynamics Worldwide Corporation. Patent pending and copyright protected. Bottle Rope is not advised for use on small children. And for customers outside of the UK, it is not advised to pick up any old piece of random string as it may turn out to be a snake. Please seek advice from a medical professional before trying to use Bottle Rope. Side effects of using Bottle Rope include vomiting, diarrhea, dizziness, short sightedness, and the uncanny ability to speak very, very fast. Bottle Rope can be found at any good beach around the shores of the UK.